Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in an epilogue episode of the TNO Brave New World Code Talker update which we're playing with the Russian Federation led by Yevgeny Primakov, a person of the ARPP, who's a right-wing populist, but we gotta form a government and talk about his presidency. Despite what Shukshin and his clique of his idealists may think, despite what the radical youths and students on the streets may say, despite what their surgeon and Arab next terrorists may do, they cannot change the truth. The Russia owes its prosperity, owes its sovereignty, and owes its freedom to corporations. Without severe wheat, Phoenix guns, or Tesla's innovation, the German heel would have crushed a great nation forever. Borsha is the fact that the silent majority of hardworking Russians understand. Now, having given Yevgeny Primakov and his all Russian Patriot Party the mandate to rule, they will be silent no more. By fully embracing the free market, streamlining uh, Russia's bloated bureaucracy, and preventing dangerous radicals destroying our democracy, the old order will that made it a great country will return. And only elements of Russia will have any reason to complain. <coughs> a lot of growth. Debt GDP ratio is not bad. Um, but this is where we're at right now. Um, if I had, it was up to me, I would probably would annex all these extra people, but whatever. Um, I guess we could have. We still have Romania with us. Oh, I guess we own this too. You know what? Screw it. We're going to own this. It's our core territory. Look at that. It's our core, core territory. I love it. Um, in the meantime, we do need to form a government here. We don't need them anyways. Farmers. Allow some monarchists. I'll let the farmers in. And let the monarchists return too. Find other solutions. Uh, find other solutions. Oh my god. Stop it. Maybe Mr. Shushin too would like to? Uh, well, there are the elections. Uh, well, you see, we got gray, 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 gray. There's a lot of people here who voted for us, which was fantastic. But right now, um, Coalition Unity is at ne oh, negative. Ivan Silyev. Oh, they're kind of friendly, though. All right. Cool. Make token concessions, gain 15 more opinion. Bribe. Oh, wait, what? Oh, now we're in opposition. But we are the opposition. Oh, we don't have to pass anything. No major bills. Well, whatever. <coughs> Getting your hands dirty. In the aftermath of the most recent election, the ARPP now stands in a position which enables us to finally pursue our deepest goals. With Brimakov at our head, we can begin the first steps of forging a new and improved destiny for the Russian Federation, once sustained by the power and prosperity of the mega corporations and controlled by the absolute power of the state. The path is ahead is clear. And even now the first steps are being taken, the Duma will bow, the courts will submit, and the people will be properly informed of the state media designed for transparency and truthfulness. And when we're done, we will look upon our work with pride as we will have finally solidified our power against all internal opposition and save Russia from its internal divisions. Controlling the media. Uh, ooh, our generous benefactors. Uh, through the many years of turmoil the Federation went through, there was always one group to guide us through the worst of every storm, the mega corporations. These massive businesses have sacrificed so much for Russia and only to have been attacked by the likes of Shukshin and his fellow posse of fools who aimed to destroy the Federation's greatest heroes in an attempt to elevate the wealth of the everyday man. This is an absolutely unforgivable act, for if anyone deserved the vast wealth and resources of Russia, as though that risked everything for its defense. Our first moves would be to elevate the powers as a reward for their generous acts towards the advancement of all Russia, creating a powerful ally in the process that will remain loyal throughout our pursuit of reform. So, yeah. Never enough growth, though. Never enough growth. Only 14%, almost 15%. What the heck is that? How do I even get the high? But mer better military professionalism. Nice. Uh, we do have a cup of green tea here to keep us nice and warm. Hey, more political power. Also, fresh off the presses. That's not worth it. Like we did uh, finish the last episode. Uh, base inflation. Get rid of that inflation. Your lips, lips, it's not great, but whatever. Our generous benefactors. Do we really get two a day? Holy crap. <clears throat> We all want, we want their ways. Walk me through this plan again, Salavi. Uh, Primakov says he looked over the spread of reforms, grass on his desk. It's an awful lot of paperwork to be processed so quickly over a TV station. Silyev bounced into a reply, roused by Primakov's hesitation. Yes, exactly. He slammed a finger into the desk. Quickly, the public grows ever more rebellious with the outcry against our administration by the day, the minute. We've seen what these independent news channels have been broadcasting. It gives the public ideas. We need to team the media before it sparks a gosh darn uprising. He had a quiet to, to his uh, voice, a muted but filled with vigor. If Tatin's last quarter tells us anything, it's that they need something to diversify their holdings. We make a subsidiary company, buy out the competition, and the sheep go back to grazing. Bumarkov held silent for a moment, considering his words, the media remained one of the last vestiges of the country out of the grip. But making a move this quickly could only make the spark of dissent grow brighter. Bumarkov tapped his fingers on the desk with Mikhail and thought, <clears throat> So, yeah, you understand if we did this, it would be have done carefully. We can't just go into this under the assumption that people will automatically fall back in line. How do you plan on accounting for error? <clears throat> Excuse me. There won't be any errors. Everything's in place for us to run like clockwork. Silyev laid out the framework of the station more thoroughly. Primakov had to admit it had potential. If it was done correctly, one of the largest storms in the side would be gone for good. Still, the best laid plans. There's still one thing you haven't told me about. Who will be taking point on this project? 
Still, you have some record looking at this newly appointed CEO. Budimikov chuckled. You'll never fail to impress me, Ivan. Your project is approved. Try to save some of the pro profits for the rest of us. Silyev gave a sly grin and the two shared a glass for the new business venture. For in business or show business, controlling the media. <clears throat> As we plan our future, it's become clear that the biggest obstacle we face is the battlefield of public opinion. This battlefield is dominated by the vipers of the so-called free press, ignorant scoundrels who spread their own message of the truth. If we want to secure a position, we must ensure that these enemies of the nation are rooted out. In their place, we'll create a media outlet that will spread the only version of the truth. It'll let the world know of our mission, swing the citizens of our nation to support us in their practices and methods. From it, we will ensure many years of comfortable support and loyalty, of course. <clears throat> oh crap, that can have control. Uh, loyalty, influence, loyalty, influence, loyalty, influence. Favorable loans, increase inflation, get more growth for 90 days. Huh. Temporary tax breaks, more growth, less tax. Divert state funds. Oh, do we have money here? Oh, nice. Huh. Spend more money. Scholarship program, that's not bad. Cool. It no longer sends a balance between the megacorps and the state. If not completed, the megacorps expect our state to perform well within our backing. This within four months, we should reach a total GDP of 115 billion. All is well if we do reach it. If not, there may be some dark consequences. We're still lagging behind expectations. Or increase a result in a loss of decreased loyalty. <clears throat> I don't know about y'all, but we still need to uh, core a lot of our states here, man. Uh, happy December, everybody. This is interesting. All right. Um... Hundred and eleven. How do we keep increase? We get more, we need more growth. That's just going to increase inflation. You can try that one. Forty percent, I guess. Look at our business deals. Tax breaks. These ooh. steal from the states. NMG pinch from the past. If you're wondering about this one, I don't want to steal from the states. I think we'll pinch from the past, maybe. If we're truly proud from the developing Russian entertainment industry, we mustn't corrupt it with outside influence that doesn't reflect our cultures and values. Although the cost may be high, the possibility of a vastly profitable industry under control is too big of an opportunity to pass up. Already the first investments and plans are being made. Hundreds of channels with a variety of topics that concentrate on the aspects of the nation and its history and its government, of course. We'll maintain the right to have the final say in publishing and display of such topics, for we wouldn't want any disinformation to be spread. <clears throat> Because we get, I guess, two political power day. Almost two political power day. That's nice. Sure. Um. But we don't really need that. That's not bad either. But honestly, academic base. We're already there. Cutting edge research facilities. We honestly don't need that either. So. Do we have more money? I don't want to do that one. If anything, we'll do this one instead. Oh, what is this? Oh, crap. Uh, mass media bait. Uh, oh, these guys. Huh. It's like media. Buy. Legal strength. Impregnable. No one seems to have truly Im impermeable defense. And wars waged in a history in the world of business come applies. Same applies. Through a combination of techniques such as bribes, manufacturing scandals, and sabotage, we can dr gradually erode the weight of confidence, therefore transferring this channel to us at a lower cost. Huh. Siphon funds. Invest. This is really cool, actually. Legal strength. Due to questionable legal strength, the true cost of adding to this TV stamp channel is 46 billion million. If it's too expensive for our own good, we might want to weaken their ability to negotiate with the good both means. We need more money. That's cool. 60% growth is probably not going to be enough to sell either. Can't protest the unknown. Legal strength will be increased by five. Well, tax breaks, I guess. 
One of the primary weapons used, those who oppose the mega corporations have used was the ability to tax them into the red. Yet after having uh, have sacrificed so much for the Federation, who can claim that they deserve such undeserved and harsh restrictions by some of them? It's time we do undo the tyrannical acts of our predecessors. Not only will we let the existing taxes, but we'll exempt them from the most normal ones as well. In doing so, we can begin to further elevate the power of the mega corporations while gradually improving the benefits of our partnership. Yeah, definitely not these two. This one? I don't want to do that one either. Economic control. 75 days, 115 billion. Oh, we should be able to get there, actually. I still want to integrate more places, though. Um, copy game shows? American citizens enjoy some of the most sophisticated and creative television programs, which have greatly improved American satisfaction with life. Though the ARPP regime is no popular organization, it does not mean we must make it life so boring. With limitation of licensing, we will air some American style programs to the Russian people. Copy uh, American cartoons in the war torn 50s and 60s. Sometimes the only source of happiness for Russian children are smuggled tapes of American cartoons, when, which has left quite the impression amongst Russians, young Russians who are now in the workforce and fathering their first children. The NMG will seek to strategi strategically buy off some of the rights, especially those classic ones that are much cheaper than recent animation. Copy Japanese game shows. Japan's massive population has resulted in many opportunities for the media industry, where some of the fiercest competition on the face of the earth takes place. So it offers us ample amounts of chances to show imitating some of theirs and avoid the mistakes along the way. Copy of the cartoons. Japanese cartoons uh, have recently become sensationalist among Asian and Russian youths. So-called anime often feature fictional fantasy settings and advanced cinemato cinematography, not seen in Western hand-drawn animated films. If we can secure exclusive rights to some of these works, the NMG can be greatly benefit. Introduce a war, produce a war movie. Um, uh, war films have been some of the great, most popular genres after the Great Wars, and Russia is in a unique position after the Second West Russian War. We're left with this great number of retired veterans and ample amounts of captured German material. Maybe we can work something out with this stuff. Profit, huh? You're getting almost $10 million, huh? The ratio will go down a little bit, huh? So we suck this one. We lose 21 million, 21 and a half. We get, when we move, we get more of our money back. Fortnite profit. Uh, we're gonna make a war movie. Screw it. It's time for a war movie. Growth, 15% is not much. Uh, deficit's getting higher, which I, is starting to worry me a little bit more, but whatever. Give us that war movie. Please. Ah, uh, as we take another sip of tea. That'd be really cool if we could do that. And... There you go. How much money do we have? 8% share, huh? That's not much. Tax breaks. Lucrative business opportunities. Ensuring the loyalty of such power of entities like those of the mega corporations will require some very interesting concessions. A lot of them just that. The vast expanse of the Federation. Uh... A harbor a cornucopia of natural resources and untapped consumer markets which offer endless opportunities to the mega corporations provided we ensure that the smaller businesses seek to offer anything resembling competition. Offer the mega corporations such lucrative opportunities will further increase their loyalty while increasing their own wealth in the process. The people may protest, especially those who own private businesses, but we must sweep them aside to ensure the fulfillment of our aspirations. Yeah. Siphon funds? No, probably won't. Now, fortunately, profits conduct consumer su oh, survey. Point one nine one. Because succeeds a company, we still have to listen to what our audience truly wants. We'll mobilize some of the subsidiaries to conduct mass surveillance all surveys across the nation. As each region has its own preferences, tailoring the program's so taste is absolutely crucial. Or, uh, the Lego strength of every TV station goes up by 5. We get almost a million here. Goes up by 5, we get 1.2 million. Ah, legal strength goes down, that's not bad. Reduced by 5. Well, let's do this one, because it gives us almost 1.2 million. It does increase them, but, you know, we can always lower that later. And we'll, then we've got to keep doing this up here. Um, grant favorable loans? No. Yeah, when we're moved to get more influence, we have more growth for now, less taxes, more growth for now. Yeah. The burning circuses. Cigar smoke filled the room, and the, as a humming of lights and ticking of the clock continued the rhythmic tuning. Beyond an or, ornately uh, carved desk in the middle of it sat all primitive, a uh, president of Primakov, organizing a set of papers and reaching for the third cigar for the hour. After all, today was just new, another day of business. <clears throat> oh, crap, come on. Uh, if you want to increase the admin efficiency as well, again, please go right ahead. It is what it is. And... Uh, after all, today was just another day of business. Some of the corporate executives had sent a few representatives to hold a meeting with the president, one which is of the utmost importance and concern for him to partake in. Things need to be organized and ordered and be ready for when they arrive. The doors of Primakov's office burst open with a neatly dressed, yet stone-faced corporate officials taking their seats at various seats in the front of his desk. Front, in front of his desk. In 
front of his, of his desk. Among the group was a Vino Gradov, who led the discussion. Put in a cough, let's not clear up the purpose of this meeting with meaningless introductions. We're here for actions, not words. It sort of followed her over to, the, to Primakov, as the latter gave a glare of suspicion. Upon further examination, its contents became quite queer, queer, clear, why Vino Gradov was so intent on avoiding pleasantries. A detailed plan involving the repeal of past reforms, tax breaks, and further political backroom dealings dotted every line of the page. Vino Gradov could tell when he had finished reading and spoke once more. As you can see, her goals are quite ambitious. However, the... If their full extent were to ever unveil itself to the general public, would be ruined within days. That's where you come in, Primakov. He raised his eyebrows. I truly don't see how I could keep the vultures off you and your posse. Surely there's something I'm not understanding here. Vino Gradov simply smiled. It's quite simple. You gotta close the curtains, so to speak, and distract the public with something while we push through more controversial aspects of our goals. The president rose from his seat, sighing as he did so, and adjusting the buttons of his suit. And distraction, what would you have in mind? Well, a bit of war. At the very least, focusing our media outlets on something of this type. Perfect. The state Duma will vote on repealing the Environmental Protections Act. For the longest time, Russia's potential has been capped by those who preach the supposed threats of pollution, a message who ma that many sadly support. The previous administration may not have been willing to push limits of our industrial capability, but will not dare put restraints on the pursuit of prosperity. We will need to repeal these regulations and laws while silencing the activist groups who blind us to the truth, or are blind to the truth of their cause. While with us, our act, our, wealth, our wealthy corporate partners will be more loyal than ever, as they will no longer be shackled by the crises or cries of the unenlightened commoner. Our eyes on the world. Here you go, Stepan. <clears throat> Make sure to get this done by uh, tomorrow. Stepan looked up from his desk. The smell of coffee was still fresh in his mind. One of his colleagues placed a stack of piles behind his computer. He gave a polite nod to Stepan. Don't worry, you're gonna like this one. Stepan smiled as he reached for this coffee mug and grabbed the first file. He almost dropped his mug in surprise. Polish army, resistance contracts, whip and shipments. Um, so I read this one before. Um, if you wanna read this one again, our eyes on the roll. Please go right ahead. This is gonna be one. This is gonna be a long one. Turkey wouldn't mind too much. So, apologies about that. But uh, I've been messing around with this a little bit more. We did get to, to invest in the NMG. Uh, conduct a consumer survey, produce a war movie still, of course, which is taking forever to get done. Um, other than that, we're still trying to core, oh, we still have so much to core, my god. Um, but overall, with the American Corporation's bans, currently we have exceeded, or at least equated expectations. And this will result in increasing loyalty, which is great, which is what we love. Um, in the meantime, we can buy a couple of these places. We have $431 million. We did just buy these two, because I don't, I don't know anything about Russian TV. Impregnable, legal strength, excellent. 134. We'll spend this one here. 34%. Not bad. But we'll continue doing this. I don't want to do that one yet. I want to keep making more money. Decrease low strength. Lose $6 million. Boom. Boom. And then the next two we'll do. Uh, let's do Volgograd and Crimea. I think that'd be pretty decent because we still get one and a half political power every single day. Um, in the meantime, we've got to continue reading about repealing and then can't protest the unknown. Our efforts exerted our influence and solidified our grip over Russian media have begun to bear fruit. Even now, the network is among the most popular nation. Even in neighboring nations, our broadcasts have begun to gain, gain traction. However, the primary goal is not to simply keep the people content with the bread and circuses, but to create a veil that separates a citizen from the state. In the pursuit, we've already begun to gain ground. Already, the approval readings of President Poromikov have begun to show a sense of improving. Regardless of how realistic our message is, we go on onwards that the people wouldn't be capable of understanding our true goals anyways. Economic control, huh? Alright, so now what? Oh! They still expect the same thing? Oh, that's okay with me. Um, 230. Well, we need 225, so... Uh... Not a lot of senators there. Uh... There's not a lot of guys there either. We'll have it, so. Is this still really the same? 115 billion? Oh, man, I'm okay with that. Perhaps look at our arms contracts? No, I'm good. No, we're good. Siphon funds? No, we're good, too. Um, you can blackmail them, maybe. But for now, continue doing that. Where's the growth likes? 11.7, nearly deficit. Inflation's going down. Uh, debt GDP ratio is 76.8%. Not bad. Not bad. 90 billion in debt. Not great. 90.46. Securing our hold. After months of struggle and backdoor dealings, we now find ourselves in a position with more security than ever before. With the backing of the mega corporations, as well as the direct control over the flow of information to the people, we can now begin to pursue our final goal absolute power of the Federation. Today's been in the making for a long time, as all who doubted us now stand in all the newfound power. Soon the Duman's courts will no longer be able to destruction to our ambitions, and Russia's destiny will be at the mercy of Burmakov's will. Cool. More green tea, please. Very nice. All right, anything else? Of course, there's that stuff down there. Seven more funds, and we can use more blackmail. 
So we got three of these guys, 33% market share. We will need a black male more. Um, yeah, I guess. It's excellent. We just need to make, make more money. Saturday Night Live. The aroma of popcorn filled the room as Andre carried a bowl of the li little yellow treats in the living room and the eager grasp of his son and daughter's wife Julia taking a comfortable position on the far side of the couch. Come quickly, my dear, or we'll miss a show. Andre sat down along with his wife, covering his children in a blanket and reaching for the remote to his new TV. With the press of a button, images of many varieties flashed before his eyes until he found what he was looking for. A comedic little show of ducks, each one with an obvious representation of tyrannical historical figures reduced to nothing more than laughable children's cartoon characters. As the angel music began to play, he thought back to his darker days of his own youth, when such a luxury item was practically not existent in the backwater village that he once called home. It made him really think about how far his nation had come from those dark days when he rushed into abandoned wine cellars just so that he could avoid the ever-present threat of the bombs. Nowadays, the only thing he had to worry about was uh, petty politics and working in his 9-to-5. He had heard something about the corporation's plans to reduce wages uh, and extend hours, but he hadn't seen any media coverage on such a ridiculous plan at all. Andre saw it back to the screen in front of him, as a duck that was obviously just the old Fuhrer of Germany was electrocuted by other characters, among them the Federation's own Mikhail Baganov. The kids laughed with glee, and he couldn't help but laugh with them. After all, life was good, and there was no sense in trying to go out looking for trouble in the ever created realm of politics. Can't fight what you don't know about. It's true. Happy May, though. Happy May. Alright. Still securing a whole power, is not getting that much better, but oh well. Coalition Unity? Well. Hopefully they vote for it. My board and those in the coalition will not use the opinion, but rather coalition plus unity plus. Well, maybe we won't get it. We do, do that. Now oh, we got more votes. Well, we got the votes. Unity ain't very high though, so we might screw this up. Screwing the courts. Uh, the mayor view the remaining threats as still continue to stand in our way. Few pose much of a threat to political domination as much as mass legal entities such as the Supreme Court and the fools within. Although it certainly seem initially seem as though such a problem can't be dealt with, a few well placed bribes and blackmail can easily ensure its continued support. And even though the pieces on the board turn to our side, we'll finally have crossed a point of no return. Primakov and the ARPP inch ever closer to the goal of oligarchy, and our opponents will be forced to watch as we burn all the way of the work. And from its ashes, Primakov shall uh, tr create a truly strong state. No, oh, we have like, oh, half a billion, huh? Damn tax hike. We could do that. Yeah, that's not as bad now. But still. Divert state funds. Yeah, I could do that. Election night in the microcosm. It's Virgin United Moscow, as election results have been counted on, the results are revealed to the nation. The ARPP had won, with only a slight edge over the competitors. Soon after, an uproar of the noise came from the local tavern, both the do both those devastated and celebrating victory. Dmitry, slightly drunk, finally managed to spew a coherent sentence. You know, you know, Primakov is actually the best possible leader. It's going to give us all, all of us, you know, money and jobs by allowing the corporations to expand. At this, there was another uproar in the tavern. People shouting both insults and praise at Dmitry, but in response, and a totally to the room, oh, well, the socialists will give us more jobs and better pay. The corporations will exploit us and take our money. Huh. Well, they'll even maybe even kill us too. Remember the days of Pokrushkin? In response, Dmitry screamed profanities at Anatoly, raving at him how Primakov and the ARPP would save the people of Russia from poverty or reminding them that how all had a job under Pokrushkin, even if some were undesirable. His supporters began fighting with Anatoly's supporters with those attempting to calm, calm it down. Uh, uh, with those attempting to calm it down, failing. Finally, Anatoly managed to yell over the noise, saying, No man whose job is slavery is living happy. They're all property in a man's clothing. You you cannot say this, uh, this, this is justice. No, it cannot. It cannot be. The tavern, including its owner, began brawling. Fists began throwing at all who disagreed. T chaos taking over the building and the rabble. With hundreds of voices yelling and a brawl causing the people's drinks to shout against the floor, the two began this. The two who began this, Dmitry and Anatoly, still managed to hold the com conversation. It is justice. People are able to get to work. Get money, how it is. How it is not justice, comrade. It was barely uh, hearable over the commotion in the tavern. The fight now entirely engulfing the small room, some people knocking on the floor, bleeding. Long before the room was evacuated by the police, the commotion finally being forced to an end. However, it, though it had ended, Anatoly couldn't help but feel it was a sign of what was come. An unrepairable divide within Russia that may rip the country apart. A storm, a storm looms over the horizon. Yay! Brothers cooperate. Many see those in the Supreme Court as being virtuous individuals who are immune to what most decry as corruption and bribery. And although there are certainly those who insist on sticking to their virtues in the hopes of maintaining a healthier public image, there are far more who can't help but salivate the ideas of further aligning their own pocketbooks. Uh, significant Paul Cash has been compiled to achieve exactly that. Several candidates for this are lined up. And with support our last challenger, we'll slowly begin to crumble and pave the way for an ultimate goal. That's it. Where is Peter Nikolaev? That's a good question. Uh, we do want more growth, though. 
Sure, why not? Uh, Vadim Pavlov adjusted his hard hat while uh, watching the next engine and slowly make his way into the frame vehicle. <clears throat> the vehicle frame. In a matter of moments, his team would go to work, ensuring the engine was well fitted before sending it to the next part of the manufacturing line. But a loud buzz echoed through the factory and his countenance fell. The PA system boomed underneath the manufacturing facility. Vadim Mikhailovich Pavlov, your presence has requested in the manager's office. Vadim walked slowly towards the office, away from his post. The entire situation was already strange to begin with. He was a productive worker. Praised by his boss, his diligent, and his loyalty to the company, so why a PA announcement? He opened the door to the office and his body shuddered in fear. The old overweight manager, a man Vadim had never been a person, stood next to two uniformed soldiers glaring at him with hawk like eyes. It wasn't a promotion or a raise, it was an interrogation. His manager took a sip from his own steel, steel, steel canteen. Vadim Mikhailovich, sit down. These two gentlemen are from the FSB. Vadim sat in, slowly, perspiration, perspiration beating on his forehead. Why, why me, he said. I'm low. I worked all my life for severe, attended every ARPP rally in the city, fought for in the Liberation War. I'm not a traitor, I'm not a dissenter. For God's sake, I'm loyal. Perhaps one of the FSB agents said. He flipped open his notepad. What was your relationship with the Piotr Izoyevich Nikolaev two weeks prior to your dismissal? In a system of authoritarianism, you must always be a victim. A little more money. Legal strength. We'll lose a little bit of money. Mm, Sack and funds. Oh, do we have a little bit of money here too? No. Okay. Um, 0.27 is not very much. That's pretty good, but I don't want to increase the legal strength of anybody else here. Uh, what can we buy this? Oh, their worth is higher than our budget. No, it's not. Whatever. Uh, descent. Vadim Pavlov and Pietro Nikolaev stepped into the crowded break room in the Sibir factory. It was their lunchtime, something that neither Sibir nor ARPP had the courage to cease from the country's laborers, after all. They bore the brunt of the cacophony of industry, suffered under the kaleidoscope of smoke and sparks burnt from manufacturing farm equipment. For some, the lunch break was a time to inhale cheap tar and nicotine from the gritty cigarettes. For these two, it was time to prattle. Do another day, another crappy shit. Did you hear from the manager to increase productivity? Were they going to tighten quote enforcement? Pietro said, What's next? Armed guards are forced to work on gut point? Calm down, Pietro. It's in just inspectors, right? Vadim said it can't be that bad. We're the workers, the ones that actually make the value in the business. We just don't come out of the earth after all. Peter grew more agitated. We fought against the Germans to destroy fascism in Russia. Now we're bending over for our fascist corporatists but bit by bit. Don't you think there's a better choice uh, than allowing the oligarchs to trample over us? Hey, his face began to turn red. Shukshin was a union buster. And a corporate toady. He didn't have the bravery to admit that the Federation has always been a dictatorship. A dictatorship, Vadim asked Peter. A dictatorship of the owning class. Vadim rubbed his eyes, but the ARPP aren't doing anything wrong. The economy's doing the best it's ever been without them. We wouldn't have these jobs if we didn't house the people. Peter, you can't be telling me this BS, especially in the factory you defend. If so, I can, and I'll make sure that the parasites in charge of the factory know what this employee thinks of his policy change. Our brothers didn't die in protest to allow oligarchy to triumph again. Peter stomped off to his boss's office while the other workers stared at him, bursting out of the break room like a fish out of water. Roger saying, you're a poor strategy. I blackmail those who do not. Although there's certainly a large majority whose loyalty is purchasable, there's unfortunately still a group who continue to resist our generous offerings. However, the group is far from invulnerable. Agents have compiled along us of potentially career-ending crimes committed by our opponents. Although some of these claims aren't exactly true, we can at least guarantee almost all remaining opposition will no longer be so against our reforms. Those that remain will find themselves in a particularly unfortunate situation, as their voices are drowned out by our unified and united voice. Nice. Top of shows, huh? If you want to be a new hope again, please go ahead. Maybe the good will triumph over evil? No, we'll have to wait and see. It's excellent. Still can't buy it, though. No, uh, 1.7. Invest? Let's go and invest. Straight up buy him. Buy him. Can't do this one yet, though. It's worth a lot. We're still voting? No? Okay. Well, okay then. Listening tongues. Um, ooh. This would be nice to do, too. Uh, Dimitri had the ARPPD from across the table as he dug us into a cell. Look, just between you and me, Yvonne, it's not that I'm particularly dedicated, but we've been doing okay, okay? Uh, there's no reason to swim and struggle against the current. <clears throat> Yvonne chose the words carefully. He couldn't push the amical shoot shoot Steve too far. Not yet. Look, no one can deny you guys over the hour. People have done a lot of good work, that's for sure. But do you really want to say things, say, see things stay like this forever? Worship can always be better, stronger, to hold its attire. To be honest, yes. Things are perfectly fine now, Yvonne. I don't get why you guys are so up in arms about it. Not to mention, I've got my own reservations about the Siloviki you guys are. <clears throat> 
Ivan cut him off. For the last time, they are on our core. We're politicians just like you, uh, Dimitri. The people that support us do so out of their own volition, and aren't exactly, we aren't exactly in a position to refuse happy support. It's just Dimitri's side. I just don't have the energy nor conviction to argue about this right now, Ivan. Please, let's just eat. As they finish up their lunch in relative silence, Ivan stood up an envelope in hand, secu securely tucking it into Dimitri's coat pocket. Keep this with you, open it when you get home. What's this, Dimitri said, inspecting the inconspicuous package? Something that might change your mind. That afternoon, Dimitri returned home with an extra 3,000 rubles, as an implication that there would be more on its way, if he did what he knew they expected him to. Do for the baker, life-changing money for the ordinary is but a minuscule dent on the state. The cards are stacked. At long last, we're nearing the end of the road. A corporate allies are stronger than ever. The media of our nation keeps the people content and dispenses the only, the only the truth they need to know. As the Supreme Court bends the well, with many within the ARPP now propose to be finally banished off the last pieces on the board. Two final objectives must now be accomplished. First, Primakov has pointed out the potential of our RAPP if we were to be swayed towards our direction. Lastly, we need you to truly earn the goodwill of the people so that we may purge any remaining discontent. Yes, please. How much money do we get now? 14 million? Well, we're going to keep corn more stuff too because we definitely have to still do that. Excellent, nice. A bad rap, huh? Sergei had been sitting in his office, hanging up to the table for a while now. At this point, it's pretty sure the people who arrested him weren't actual police officers, and he could hear his dog, Max, uh, howling from the other end of the building. Dudes got him when he was out for his morning walk. He hoped that his best friend was being treated with at least some dignity and respect. Suddenly, two men walked in the room, ARPP pins flashing off their iron suits. As they closed the door and locked it tight, Sergei began to form some idea of what was going on. <clears throat> so we could tell who, who we are and who we work for, Sergei, the senior of the two men said. His breath reeked of cheap vodka and sausages. Uh, Sergei Ravrasankas, I guess you could say so. What do you stooges want? What's the meaning of all this? He tried desperately to not show up, but Sergei had heard about all about the more vulgar members of the ARPP. He feared a beating or worse. All we want is a cooperation, Sergei. The thug dropped a file on the table in front of Sergei. Go ahead and have a look. And sour images of Sergei doing obscene acts, buying escorts, purchasing narcotics, beating his dog. But Sergei had never done anything of the sort. He loved his wife and his dog and hadn't touched any sort of illicit substance since his teen years. A realization slowly dawned on him. I feel as if we're all on the same page, Sergei, but let me give you the specifics. You vote our way on the upcoming bill, and we'll keep these photos of our little secret, all right? He winked at Sergei with a tobacco fleck grin. His friend fiddled around in the keychain and locked Sergei's handcuffs. You're free to go now, but Christ, why me? It's nothing personal, my friend. Friends in the rap. Friends in the common folk. Oh, the common folk. Inflation increases by so much, holy crap. <coughs> Although we may achieve dominance over the political function of the state, the state that prop is propped up by the masses underneath it, in other words, power is meaningless without a group to validate it. President Poirot has realized this, and now his priorities will have to shift from the great game of politics to convincing the great people of Russia of his good intentions and affection for them. Through media appearances, painting him as a command of the people, to adjust taxes and social programs so that the ARPP is painted in the most positive images, the people will learn to love and respect us if they do not, well, I'm well, sure they do not cause trouble, of course. But happy August, everybody. Beautiful. Look at that peepee. -pee. Wow. Still stuck at 115 billion, huh? Siphon funds. Copy American game shows. Legal strength. Lose 10 million. We do both those jobs. Lower that and then. We're almost done with that, thank god. Only 0.65 kinda sucks though. Token uh, tax reforms. Daily political power goes up, which is pretty nice. Uh, action or reaction. Usually meaning the party was a place for everyone to show the best side. Par party members. And deputies would meet up in their finest outfits and finest watches to try and press others. Tonight would be one of those nights where the evening had started in a local hotel that had been hired for the evening. There was only one person that stood out of the crowd for all the wrong reasons. Vasily Klopov was dressed in a trench coat covered in dirt, and most noticeably had a black eye on the left side. Without saying a word to anyone in the hotel lobby, he headed towards the bar and ordered a drink for himself. He glanced ahead without really focusing on anything, but lost in his own thoughts about what had happened before. One of his fellow deputies, the ARPP, Timofey Makarovich, sat down next to him. Unlike Vasily, he fitted in perfectly with the crowd, wearing a brand new suit imported from overseas. Vasily. Vasily glanced to his side with an intense stare and went back to drinking. It's ridiculous. I'm just as dedicated to the party as you all are, and yet when I want to help even more, I get this as my reward. He motioned at his eye. Sometimes, my friend, you just have to follow the party line. There's a hierarchy for a reason, you know. And when you overstep that, it provokes a reaction like that. You just have to let it go for now and properly work your way up the ranks if you want to see your ideas happen. Is that what we're here then? <clears throat> Is that what? A nation of big men handing out big orders and wanting no actual input on how we can do things better. The silly hopped. Do you know how much potential we end up losing out on because of these big leaders with their big commands? I'll believe there was an old Russian term for such men. <clears throat> 
Uh, he finished finishes drinks and put it back on the bars to turn to uh, leave. Boyars. Old Russian principles within the new coat of paint. Token tax reforms. Curtail unnecessary spending. A new proposal has come to the desk of President Primakov, detailing a new option for gaining public's approval. It describes a possible plan that will not only achieve a successful public relations victory, but also fill our pockets in the process. We'll drastically slash government spending on our social programs while publicly announcing that such cuts will further motivate the impoverished to make their own way. And with our control over the media, we can spin it as a boon for the people while also freeing up money for the more practical uses. Because they didn't need that money, right? How much money do we get? 20 million? It's not bad. <coughs> now, wow, it's a fast August. Time for September now. Cool. Friends in the RAPP. Huh? Although there's plenty among the Duma that are under our thumb, the bands we possess are not nearly as large as they could or should be. Eyeing up our potential targets, the most vulnerable are those of the RAPP who may be open to switching their allegiance and joining in our cause. With an equal amount of blazing dollars, as well as a few attacks from our corporates and media allies in the right pressure points, that will be all we need to ensure yet another political victory in the Duma. <coughs> Threaten them, huh? Convince them. 0 0.03 surplus, not bad. Although money is certainly a very alluring thing, it's far from the most effective motivator of all. Human emotion, fear, is by far the strongest. For the rich and power, fear is exactly what we shall distribute. We shall let them know what will happen if they refuse our generous offerings. Just as we swayed our political opponents in the past, the ever-present danger of a suspicious death, their disappearances. Should their political opinions divert from those of the ARPP, it will keep our new friends in line. Let's see, more growth? Oh, I, don't, I really don't like that one. What about state funds? Because why not? No more blackmail? I love blackmail. Except when it comes to me. Ah, oh, not bad. Select to focus. Um, convince them. Threaten them. Just a few threats here and there. Uh, token tax reform. The earning of the goodwill of the people can be accomplished with a surprisingly small amount of effort. Although there are several things we could do, Putimakov has insisted on getting the most out of a small amount of effort, since we wouldn't want to give away too much state funds for the simple act of appeasement. The solution, mild tax reforms and redu reduction. Of course, the negative effects of such taxes won't be applied to members of the ARPP or our allies, and we won't lose much money in the process. However, those of the lower middle class will celebrate such reforms and will gain so much desired gratitude from them. We got more than enough stability for everybody, my friends. Ah, 1990, screw it. We'll do it anyways. Because we can. Siphon funds and... Well, we're going to invest more funds. Blackmail. Bye. Well, we own a lot of the media. Our share will decrease by 0.5%. Go figure. So then what happens next? We own them all. Yeah, so. I mean, we might as well do that. I mean, there's no no competition, really. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, people past five. Although the intellectuals and progressives will continuously attack the government for trivial things like the lack of transparency or neo-authoritarianism, what these thinkers claim do not make up for the lack of their actions. Who else could bring Russia to such heights over than the Patriotic Party? Who else could uplift the Russian people from poverty better than the ARPP? The people won't care about what goes on beyond the regime so long as they are, most of them, reap the benefits of the arrangement. Giving people real, tangible benefits will sever the support base of the DSPR and the RAPP. Let's see how the many will come to the next rallies. More money, more money, more money. I'll convince them. Just like the Supreme Court, there's many who are willing to change their tune with only a suit of suit suitcase full of cash. Although some it costs more than others, the prize is surely worth the act of putting some ball of nail in the coffin into democracy. But the final walls of opposition crumble the long-term goal of Primakov and the ARPP edge ever closer to reality soon. The cancer democracy will be transformed into the strong authority that the Federation so desperately needs. Very true. Uh, hey, death is not great. Ooh, inflation is critical. It's reducing by 2 point some odd percent, but still. Maybe you're wondering about it. the eyes to raise, please go ahead as well. There you go. Siphon funds. Lose a lot of money. But whatever. Eyes of the East. Commit some. Yeah. <coughs> if you stay in line, you're good. With the demon effectively under control, it's about time we show that this control becomes total. Our power has increased so much in recent times, we can now ensure all of our opponents to either stay in line or remove from the board. 
found out today of the dream that the people call democracy or nearing. With the remaining organs of government submitting to Primakov's authority, and the currents that separate the world from us are closing evermore, our success is all but assured. Nice. Temp tax act maybe reduces uh, that, which is not great, but we get a little bit of plus. And hopefully the, this will just drastically increase too. We got plenty of political power now. Staff and funds. Um, we could do that over time. Like we reserves by a little bit more. I'm gonna guess we could, but we don't really have to. It's just a little corrupt, right? It's just a tiny bit of corruption. Um, temporary tax breaks? Sure. Let's get some more growth, shall we? <coughs> Excuse me, yes. And it finally supplies on a perfectly broken system. Uh, at long last, the dream of the ARPP has been achieved. The mega corporations are as loyal as ever. The average Russian only knows what he needs to. As the media outlets spread the good word of Primakov to Ayla. The bureaucracy of the nation bends our well, the few remnants of the resistance slowly being swept away. Finally, their power is unquestionable. The world decries their actions as tyrannical and lighter than corruption, yet they will never understand that Primakov is the only one willing to secure destiny, the destiny, and truly lead Russia into the modern age. Increase more uh, growth, more political power, lose a lot of stability, but thus the new swift run, swift sun rises, the perfect dictatorship. Huh. Well, it depends on who you ask. Economic control, huh? Elite of the elite, huh? There you go. We're still losing market share, but who do we lose it? Who are we losing it to? That's my question. Thirty percent growth is not bad, though. <coughs> Happy now to seventy-eight. We get to February of the same year, of course. Almost ten percent inflation. My God, what is this real life? Oh. Relation's a bit critical here. How much money do we get now? Almost 30 million, that's not bad. Alright. The perfect dictatorship. An alliance with the clique. Uh, I've read this one or last time, so if you want to read this one, please go ahead. I know that the last episode I did read this one, but we didn't really do much about this, so. And what is next? Yevgeny Primakov sat alone, slumped over his luxurious mahogany desk, rubbing his temples. The party was the same as all the other parties with the mega corporation's ends. Exhausting. Another day, another balancing act, the maintaining of a system which produces unprecedented growth by empowering business while keeping it just controlled enough to prevent its own destruction. People out there in the castles of golden guns, they do not understand what is needed for this country. No, no, for this country. With only Yevgeny, and as close as advisors truly comprehend the scope of the mass machine and the media contacts, the shell company is carefully constructed in the blackmails and bribes. But Imbakov reached for his bottle of imported gin and a Turkish cigar. He shakily took a drag from his cigar before drinking a deep shot of whiskey, letting the flavors combine in his mouth into a smoky and fiery embrace. Only Yevgeny Primakov understood the machine, and only he could manage it. What would happen if he died? Collapse? Anarchy? Another German invasion? It weighed on him. It had all the powers in the world, but above all, uh, it was a vast sword of Damocles. The metal above him was held by a complex Rube Goldberg machine, one that could not be comprehended by the public by, by, by an individual. Benukov stared at his, his, uh, above his own head as a uh, pale white light nuzzled within a divot on the ceiling of his office. Or that it's like it transported him to something close to heaven, but there was no heaven here. Russia so close to progress, so far from God, a sublime house of cards. And that's the end of that content, but we're going to continue on and at least get this, the Chinese ones done. Modern money, please, yes. Meetings of the Maz. Several men stood around the refurbished presidential desk that sat on the renovated Kremlin. The table was fairly eccentric, of course. Far from the one that the president had used previously. But his advisors swore for days that the table needed to match the new prestige of the president of the Russian Federation held. It didn't even need to be this way. The statement was backed by actions with the quickest way to restore the Russian spirit and power globally. Russia was back on the world stage, and it wasn't going to waste time proving it. As such, it was only natural that one of the first conversations over the desk was what to do with China. The Maz are, you know, a political faction within northwestern China. They've held out for decades against Japanese pressure and harbor interests to overthrow the Japanese. Furthermore, they're ideologically varied, but not stringent on any particular beliefs. The Maz are classical Kuomintang believers, especially the current leader of Ma Jian. Ideally, they want democracy to develop China, meaning nothing we would want or suggest them to be would be outside of the White House. And sure, they'll be malleable to our interests and needs, and we can trust they'll be willing to cooperate with us, especially if we give them enough support that Western China will fall under their rule. When the Chinese intelligence division opened up, had, or intel department had finished up, he looked at the others before finally stopping the president, waiting to see if the president had any questions to ask. The president slashed in his chair, ushered in an exhausted tone. Well, obviously, we're going to meet with them. Beyond that, what can we expect? 
Western China is far from a kind place, and it's unlikely that even the United could overthrow the sphere. No, unless it could serve the thorn and give them the right resources in the right crisis, they could brood, swing eastwards and establish a regime. Maybe they don't liberate the rest of China anytime soon. Having a state between us and the heart of the sphere that is aligned with, what well, was wonderfully. We can build up another market that our businesses can work in, strengthen our glo image globally, bolster security, and hopefully make a long-term outlay. In short, it's an all-around beneficial idea to help them develop and take over the region, especially if we're planning on a longer-term confrontation with the sphere. The president sort of fixed his sitting position only to utter all the words that he needed to. In that case, then he can get to work with the KMT, send an envoy and start sending supplies along with advisors and support. How long will it take for the Mods to take all of Western China outside of Western uh, J Japanese rule? Only a few weeks. Nice. And then, of course, they'll do send Russian equipment and they'll establish West Chinese Republic, so. Slapping some funds. Happy March, everybody. Happy Marjorinos. We got plenty of growth right now. You know, inflation is god awful. Yeah, even saw a little bit more deficit still, huh? Here in the East, there's time been traveling over a week with a small contingent of gardens and support diplomats when he finally saw the old and faded KMT in the distance. Beneath the flag, several men with a fair bit of dusty but relatively new uniforms stood. Initially, the Chinese soldiers prepared for the worst, and maybe their old rifles or the convoy of the armored cars. The Chinese lowered their weapons only when they rusted them. Well, Stam had ordered the soldiers to pull the, out the J Russian flags. The Russians finally got, when well, they finally got to the crossing of the Chinese soldiers. A terse set of glances were exchanged, only to be broken up by the Rostam's Mandarin. Supposedly the best the Federation had to offer. The Chinese soldiers struggled to follow, but understood what the Tartar and the rest of the Russian detail were here for. They were to meet Ma Jian. A local Chinese officer offered to take them to, them to Jian personally and join the Russians up on their trip. Rostam used the officer to brush up on the local variant of Mandarin, and was taken aback by how nasal the pronunciation of the Chinese words were. The two became fast friends, much to the detriment of the driver, who would spend the rest of the trip listening to the two sharing details and information about the Chinese language. The two didn't even notice when they finally entered the center of the Malklik. The beauty of language knows no bounds. Rustam tried driving off as much dust and wrinkles had it developed over his trip. Uh, a Chinese friend, uh, the second he arrived, he was separated from his new Chinese friend and was taken to what he understood to be a government building. One of the local men asked Rustam to wait a moment in the one of the rooms, of which he was happy to oblige, who was beyond tired after the long trip and needed a moment to refocus his mind. The room itself was a bit bland. It had a window, a bed, a table, a few chairs, and a classical Chinese painting on the wall depicting a mountainside. For a moment, Rustam was disappointed, but he was quick to reprimand himself. Only a few years ago did Russia look like this, but despite it, not only did the Federation pull itself up, it stood up to the Germans and came out victorious. The Chinese could do the same, especially if given the right push. A few minutes passed, and finally a freshly dressed officer appeared outside his doorway and announced that Ma Zhiyang was finally to meet with the Russian envoy. To a sound surprise, Ma Zhiyang was far more plain looking than expected. It probably wore his military uniform with bright and clean KMT symbols, but the odds that he had betrayed both his sadness and strength. Xi Yuan had been fighting longer than most Russians had. It was clear that for him the war never ended. The first words he heard uttered were not bold promises, but an apology. I'm sorry for not preparing adequately, adequately for your arrival, but we didn't have much clue, uh, clue when you'd be arriving or from what direction. Therefore, we haven't prepared food or any of the etiquette fit for a representative of your nation. Rustam was quick uh, to affirm the general. Please, you needn't worry. I grew up in a Russia that was being bombed regularly. I understand your position and difficulty perfectly. So you needn't need to apologize. The one thing I could tell you without a shadow of the doubt is that we understand your struggle. That's why we're here to help. I'm to become the permanent representative of the Russian Federation to your government. Furthermore, I'm here to inform you no more supplies and support are to come to assist you and your government in the reclamation of China, starting with the West. Ma Jiuan seemingly had weights off, taken off his shoulder when the admission of aid was uttered. It might have been cold calculus in Moscow or genuine interest in rebuilding China, but for once in his life he felt maybe China had a true friend. A, forged, a bond forged against oppression. Nice. Well, I guess we could do that too, why not? What's Chinese industrialization? Where's Baba? Li, Li Jing asked her mother. Uh, he left for the factory early this morning, my love, Mama said. Uh, what would you like for breakfast? They had porridge and went out to play. What is Baba? Li Jing asked. Uh, he can't come home for lunch, my dear, Mama said. So they ate noodles and talked about the white and black strip butterflies they were outside. outside. What is Baba? Uh, the girl asked. He won't be home for a few more hours, my pet. Are you ready for your bath? Mama said. Jing let Mama wash and uh, braid her hair, but it was no fun without Baba. Where is Baba? The girl asked once again. He hasn't finished his shift, little one. Come. Uh, read with me, Mama said. Of course, Jing knew all the stories by heart, but it wasn't the same without Baba's silly voice. Uh, <clears throat> Where's Baba? Li Jing asked. He, ca he can't take you in tonight, my heart. But he left a ki uh, kiss to lay on your forehead, Mama said. Jing smiled suddenly, laid down to sleep. At midnight, Li Jing heard the front door close. Baba's at you, she asked. Ba Baba laughed. Yes, it is, he said. I miss you, beloved. I missed you. Where, are you. where were you gone so long, she asked. Baba has to work, little one, he said. We need money for rent, but never mind that. Look what I got for you. He put a cloth doll from this pocket. It was the size of a child's hand, made from a soft fabric, with buttons for eyes and a tiny scrapless red silk for her heart. Li Jing took the doll and smiled. I love it, Baba. Thank you. 
Her father knelt and kissed her on the cheek. I love you, my daughter. To understand your parents' love, you must give it to others. You must give to others. Only 12% inflation, that's all. That's all, just 12%. 68.2%, that's all. We're getting there. We're getting there. And establish West Chinese Republic, and we'll probably do the Brothers of Mongolia one later in the next uh, next epilogue video, because there are two other things we can do here, too. So, uh, I just want to look at the economy, man. Two days left. Increase more profit, please. Not enough profit. Never enough profit. More profit. God, it's only a corporation. God, I hate Comcast or Xfinity. Anyways. There you go. <coughs> yeah, let's see what we can do here. So it's weird that this isn't really a number one. Silyev. Silyev. Looks kind of cool. Um, there you go. Invest more. Increase profit? Sure, go increase more profit. Why not? 0.63. Up, up. Ah, inflation. Uh, real growth is not great. I'm just going to bet 2.5%. That's not much. That's really not much at all. But happy May, everybody. Happy May Arenos. That's it's not bad, though. Hey, more money. The West China War. Oh! <coughs> Since the late 40s, the Japan has held a stranglehold over the Chinese government. While the mainland is under de jure control of the Republic of China, the West of China has been notoriously maintained a de facto independence as a series of unrecognized warlord states. The Russian Federation is recognized as the Ma Clique, the KMT remnant headed by the Ma Clan, as a legitimate government. The Ma Clique has taken since military action against several notable warlords in the Japan government. Military shipments from Japan to Tibet are sent through airlifts. Other warlord factions have refused Japanese support. The response from the Ainai Spec is entirely neutral. The oil fin, however, shown some interest in the development of a rival government to Japan. Will a uh, beacon of hope rise, against, or rise in China? Ah, oh, interesting. Oh. So now they're all killing each other. Increase commitment. Military government in northwestern China. There we go. We sent two whole divisions. There you go. This will ultimately win very fast. Hopefully. We'll see what happens. Headlines, headlines, headlines. Uh, oh, oh, call it arms. Uh, walking to the empty store, the young man's gaze was drawn away from the cigarettes he'd originally intended to buy and stand to the newspaper rack. But the newspaper had arrived fresh out of the box. Well, listening to himself, he shuffled closer to get a better look. Shukshin sent thousands of Russians to down the Tibetan mountains. Save our sons. President Shukshin supporting maniacs. The delusions of the president and why he should vote for the Siloviki. The man scoffed, grabbing the paper and scanning the cover pages he paid for his cigarettes. He had no from the very start. The silly Shukshin, the slimy dude, was no angel after all. Anything else, sir? The cashier said after the man paid for his cigarettes. Oh yeah, actually, the man, young man replied, setting the newspaper on the counter, take the, this please, that'd be 15 rubles. The woman stated, placing his rubles on the counter, he quickly left and set him down on a bench. Before taking a cigarette out of his pack, he just bought it and stuck it in his mouth. The newspaper took the stance of a concerned mother, deathly afraid that her son would perish in the Tibetan mountains. Russians cannot withstand the tough terrain of China. The newspaper wrote, and the lack of consideration for the logistics of the intervention from the Federation would inevitably lead to catastrophe sooner rather than later, not to mention the questionable past the so-called Maklik had. His blood blowed as he stumbled to his feet, clamping the papers shut. The president was, making a terrible decision. That's when he realized what he had to do. As a democratic country, he didn't have to vote for Shukshin, he wouldn't. Next election, he swore he would do everything in his power to oust the incompetent president out of power. He didn't want to be the center of the Tibet to die. Zuko so got up from his chair, tossed a cigarette in the bin, and went to look for another political party to support. Drumming under his breath, only the ones that could truly represent the youth of Russia would get his vote. A blow to Shukshin's ever perfect reputation. Do they really need us? Are you going to the front lines or what?
Ah. Let's get over there. There you go. Track our health rising, huh? Interesting. 93.8 billion, huh? Too. All right, we have to join the war. There you go. Nearly to plus, not bad. All right. Might just make it easier for us overall. Bones of green men. There's that one. Where's our boys? These guys are not with us, but whatever. So now we should be able to go in, right? Yeah, let's see what it'd be like. There you go. Just hold out as much as you can, we should be okay. Well, that's still a lot of growth. Your Lily's Plus is really nice now. We could really constrain, constrain ourselves and do this too. Actually, that made growth go up. What the heck? Uh. Dihua? Don't lose your capital, ding dongs. Because that would suck if we did. Get Ermo. Nice. Nice. Kiemo. Cool. I have no idea how to pronounce this stuff, so. Better lower that too. Cool. Is that ours now, too? No! Wait, what? Uh, this is weird. But, I'm gonna do the next next episode, episode. We'll keep doing what we're doing. Critical inflation, huh? 65.1%. Wow. That went up by 1.5. Not bad. That's a lot of money. Mark sure is going down, though. Oh, we need more political power. Everyone's got a lot of influence, don't they? crap out of them. We'll do fine. What the heck are y'all doing? Happy September. Flies are so bad. So unbelievably bad.
How much manpower do these guys actually have? I can't imagine they have that much. Eh, they have some. Decent amount. They got plenty of guns, but that's pretty much it. For now. Now the Japanese sent divisions too, huh? I guess it shouldn't really surprise me, huh? Happy October. <laughs> I heard it blood them as much as we possibly can. Good. Percent sixty billion, not bad. Nice. And happy November. My god, trying to dig all these victory points is kind of insane. Ten Sui? Uh, oh, what the heck? Son of a gun. Come on. Should be there by now. And nice. Jining. And now happy December. Come on, man. We destroyed pretty much everything that they have had. How is that not enough? Why? Go, 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 go. God dang it, they're gonna get around Shubak probably. So long to frickin' move. Why? Yeah, you know what, I might just end it here. And if there's anything important to read, we could probably read it some, in some other episode, so. This is, this is extremely annoying. I'm sorry, but these Japanese factions would not have anything here at all, really, pretty much, so. I'm unfortunately going to have to end it here. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, and probably another upload episode. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!